know why you guys haven't filled that 53rd roster spot yet. Yeah. <laughs> what time did you try out tomorrow? I'd like, to, <laughs> like to be over there. I have my cleats in my car. Oh. All right, before we get started, obviously, for me, um, being in the National Football League a long time and now being a part of the Green Bay Packers, to be able to be a part of the Green Bay Packers and to go to Pittsburgh and play the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh, you know, obviously Mike Tomlin and I have a, um, an intimate relationship, goes back to winning the Super Bowl together. I have the utmost respect um, for him and, and the way his, his ball club plays. Um, and then uh, Danny Smith being their special teams coach, a long time um, opponent of, of mine going all the way back to when he was in Washington and I was in Tampa and um, when he was at Georgia Tech and I was at Clemson and, and on and on and on. So it's an exciting trip, I think, for us to, to um, see what we look like uh, going into that sort of an environment and this kind of an iconic game, in my opinion, the Green Bay Packers, you know, at the Pittsburgh Steelers. So um, with that, I'll, I'll take any questions you may have. Yeah, to, uh, to Tomlin, he said on Tuesday, I believe it was, talking about you, he's as good as there is in the business, top-notch leader, organizer, preparer. They got dangerous return men. He's always got a dangerous return game. Um, to have a dangerous return game, do you need to have a dangerous returner, or can you have one with just run-of-the-mill guys? Well, I think anytime, to Mike's point, that we've had a dangerous return game, we've had good returners. And I've been fortunate to be around some really good ones, you know, going all the way back to Tampa days and, and um, certainly what Keyshawn's done and what Dwayne Harris has done and Aaron Stecker and, and uh, Richard Goodman and on and on and on. So I think to Mike's point, um, we're fortunate that we think we have a good one. But I'll also go back to I think the guys that block for the returner you know, have to do a good job at their body position, their eyes, their hands, to stay away from some of the penalties that we've had, you know, to put us in better position to have some good returns. Um, and, you know, Mike was a part of that when we were together. You know, he, him and Joe and all the other coaches were part of coaching on the grass, um, all the different positions, whether it was in our return game or in the coverage game. So I think he's speaking from firsthand knowledge. So what goes into the decision on punts to sometimes have Keyshawn back there, sometimes to have Jaden back there? You've got success with both. Um, I, I, we have, and again, a lot, I think the guys up front have really been doing a good job. I think they've made good decisions, both of them on the back end. A little bit has to do with field position. Um, a little bit has to do with you know, what did the series look like for Keyshawn? How many downs was he in there for on, on um, defense? And then, uh, you know, kind of how they're going, how they're both playing. How many reps has um, Jay got on offense and where is he at? You know, th those sort of things. But basically, it's kind of been off a of field position for the most part. And, um, you know, I think Keyshawn got dinged up last week before the last return. And, and so it might have been a different outcome. But um, they're, they're both doing a good job, I think, with decisions and right now protecting the ball, which is a big thing. Nice uh, shout out to the pride of Ash Wabadon, Aaron Stecker there. Um, yeah. Are you, to, back to Bill's question, do you think you're getting more dangerous on returns? You had a good kickoff return, you had a good punt return. Do you feel like, do you feel good about where you're trending there? You know, I, 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 I think I say it every week. I, I don't know if we're ever really happy or feel like we've arrived. You know, I think we have, we have a long way to go. We did some good things, I thought, last week, but we had another penalty. You know, we had a penalty on the first punt return that put us half the distance to the goal. I think it went to the eight-yard line or the ten-yard line. And if you're going to be a good complementary football team, um, you, you can't do that to your offense or do that to your defense. You know, we had a good stop. I think we fair caught the ball on the 16-yard line, which gave us some field position compared to where we stopped them. And now we have the ball on the, on the eight-yard line. So to answer your question, I think we're moving in the right direction. But I think we take two steps back every time we have a, a lack of focus or a lack of concentration or a lack of fundamental type penalty that, that puts us backwards. And I, I think we have to clean that up. Rich, I think it was like late in the third quarter, they fair caught the kickoff. Have you seen much of that when you're watching teams around the league or teams? Um, I think as the weather changes and the ball gets further outside the numbers, closer to the boundary, you'll start to see that. And I believe last week, I think I talked about that. Um, I think the Rams were leading the league in fair catches with the ball caught outside the numbers and inside the 25. So they'd played some different kickers than we've played. So I think it could become part of it now as, as you get going and, and um, the weather changes and the ball gets wider and wider, some of these kickoffs. It'll be interesting this week to see what the conditions are up there and what the wind is like and some of those things. What is the challenge of kicking there? I think for the longest time, I, the last time the Packers were up there, I, nobody had kicked a 
50 yard field goal or something like that. I, I can't remember what the number was. Well, I think they, they've broken that. I think Boz is, is playing really well and he's played well in the past. I know he's got a 57 yard this year and um, I'm thinking if it's at Pittsburgh or not, but um, that one end zone used to be funky. I think when they first built that stadium, um, last couple times we've played up there, we, I think we've, Honor's brother's been up there and he's, he's played well. And so again, I, I, it's the same for both, right? When you go into the game, you'd like to think that you're a home team and you have an advantage, but we're trying to figure out our end zone, you know, right now down there, Honors is. And I know, you know, the Rams guy missed one in the same end zone in the same game. So we'll see what it looks like in pregame and, and hopefully it's the same for both. And, and uh, no one seems to have an advantage. We'll see how that goes. Rich, what's it been like working with Isaiah? And then what do you think that says about him being able to manage, obviously, what he does for you on teams when he's, you know, playing every down two on defense? Yeah, Isaiah, to me, when I, when I got an opportunity to come to the Raiders, he was my first call after watching all the tape. And um, I think he's not only a tremendous player, he's a tremendous young man. He's extremely focused. Um, he's extremely detailed. He's in uh, incredible uh, physical condition. Um, he's a bright um, football player. So we've tried to manage him a little bit when we can. Uh, we took him off a punt return last week when he played all those snaps on defense. And we're, we're going to leave him on punt. We're going to take him off punt. That's critical for our defense, you know, for him to play punt. And we can manage him a little bit on kickoff return. He still stayed on kickoff. So we'll see who we have available to us in the game. But a credit to him that he's able to be in that supreme physical condition to do both of those things and do it at a high level. So I'm excited for what he's doing on, on defense. And he's been that way for us for two years now on, on special teams. Are you seeing any shifts in the way they block you on field goal kicks, you know, when you're Defending field goal and extra point kicks because you block. We're a field goal pro, or when we're yeah. a field goal rush. No, when you're on field goal rush because you blocked a couple kicks, do you um, see changes or? No, not really. I mean, most field goal protection units are, you know, they're, they're, they're shin to shin in there, they're ankle to ankle, and it's usually a zone blocking scheme. It's not a man blocking scheme. You're not sure where they're going to line up. Um, and then again, we've been fortunate to get some good push and, and some good dialogue going back and forth from TJ and myself and, and uh, Kenny in there and some of those guys that have had a lot of rushes. They kind of get a feel for where they maybe feel a little bit of push or they can get a little bit more drive back to get their hand up. And so I think that's been an advantage for me a little bit is having guys that have done it a lot, being able to communicate with me during the game to some of the things that we're asking them to do and how they can adjust it to be productive for us. But usually the scheme in field goal protection is, is a zone concept. And if you get knocked back a little bit too much, you give us a chance to get closer to the block spot. Or we give them a chance to get closer to the block spot. So we'll have our hands full this week. This is a, this is a significantly physical rush team this week. So. Rich, how much different does Daniel look, both punting and holding, from when you saw him week one, having never done it in an NFL game before? Um, he's definitely, you know, he's, he's obviously he's improved and, and he's playing well um, to this point. I think his, his big factor for us early was his basic football awareness. You know, what to do in different situations. Where am I on the field? What's the wind doing? Am I double to one side, a single to the other? Or is it double-double or whatever those things are? So um, I think he's concentrating on his drop, trying to get a little bit more hang. At, you know, obviously going back to the Saint game, you know, we didn't get one of our best punts and we didn't get very good coverage at the same time, right? So I think where he is on the field, he's trying to do a better job of what he's going to actually kick, what ball he's going to hit to help the coverage, but also to help him be a little bit better without worrying about coverage. You know, what his hang looks like, if he's going to hit you know, a fat ball or a flop or whatever it is, depending on where he's on the field. I still think he's figuring out you know, what he can hit where, you know, what his strength is and trying not to get touchbacks and trying to down it inside the 10 and some of those things and, and learning how his Flyers are playing on the outside and who he can trust to make a play as well. So there's a lot of growth at that position and he's certainly um, on the uphill, we think. He's on the uphill project trajectory. Do you have a number you shoot for for hang time for the whole season? You know, we, we have a goal. Obviously, we'd always like to be over four or five if we can. And um, again, different places on the field, the wind conditions um, can lead to different type punts. So. Um, and all punters, you know, is it an eight-man front? Is it a six-man front? Is it so they play faster sometimes than others? And all those things play factors into it. So we're trying to get the best hang we can, give our guys a chance to cover it. But four or five is good. Four or five, five you know, really good with a rush coming at you. Good, good. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Happy birthday, Larry. Happy birthday, man. So good to see you.
Huh? You guys didn't know that? You know Happy birthday. Right. I don't care. Did you get cupcakes for everybody? No, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>